Um, Eleanor, in, the con in her contribution to the so-called three gifts thread, her third one, and what she did is, I don't know if you remember this, but she referred to specific moments in the video discussions that she really loved, and she gave timestamps on it. So for instance, she quotes Jason in the 13 ways of looking at a blackbird audio at 20 minute, 21 minutes and, 30, and 25 seconds and quotes him. And the third of these is going to lead me to a question I want to ask everybody. All right, and it's really a Mod Po wide question. It's a big question about poetry in our lives. So get ready. Eleanor writes that the third gift is in chapter 2.3. There is no chapter 2.3. Oh, yeah, it is. That's Stein. <laughs> Stein. There's two weeks of chapter 2, and the third part of a. F anyway. Um, item number 14 video discussion of Stein's ideas about narrative, etc at 22 minutes into the video. Did we go that long? Wow, it must have been Emily's fault that we went that long. Amaris's final words. Look at Amaris. Hey, Amaris, that smile. Just got to love that smile. Amaris's <laughs> final words. So this is a gift, Amaris. Eleanor thinks this is one of the three gifts to Modpo. Here are Amaris's final words. Thinking of language, not as furniture pieces to be moved around a room, but this idea of water, something naturally free-flowing that depends on the form that we give. Followed immediately by Al's blessing, which was the very end of the video, and, my hu and she says, my huge smile. I actually don't have a huge, huge smile, but thank you, Eleanor. When I said we should all live that way. So my question to you is, I mean, what, aside from that bullshit, you know, there's a bullshit factor in my looking at Amaris and saying, that was such a nice line, we should all live that way. It's a version of my Jewish grandmother saying, we should all be so lucky, right? We should all live that way. But Amaris said, thinking of language on his furniture pieces to be moved around a room, but the idea of water, something naturally free-flowing that depends on the form that we give, then I say we should all live that way. And my question to you is, is, is that really true? Do we want to live that way? Do we want to live that way? And what we're doing here in Modpo with this poetry, does it really matter for life? Do we, can we live that way? Do we want to live that way? It's sort of what we've been talking about all day. So I want to go around and want to get just about as many people as possible to answer this. So it's got to be quick. Andrea, do we, do we want to live that way? What is at stake? What are we doing here in, with this poetry stuff? Are we leading ourselves to a situation where we can't possibly realize such a dream, such a life? I think we do want to live that way. I do want to live that way. And I think, it's, I think of it more like um, the snow when we wanted it to snow. It's the idea of... And um, then making it real by wanting and it? And then making it real by wanting it. Can you? Okay, yeah. so poetry is that important. You can manifest absolutely through words. Whoa. Allie? Yeah, I think you have to live that way. Um, and I think we do without even trying. I think it's the instinct to... I mean, water takes... It takes the shape of the form that it fills, and we always create narrative for our lives, even if we don't wow. realize it. Water flowing as a model for life, we're just not realizing because we use so many traditional structures at how the water is freely flowing anyway. All right. So, Emily, can we build a life that's commensurate with the free-flowing water? Yeah, I think so. I think we all already live that way, and the difference is that when you study language, when you study poetry, you're trying to recognize how you live that way. Julia? Our bodies are mostly water. <laughs> so I agree that we don't have much of a choice. We have to live that way. That was either so <laughs> not, that was either so not profound or so profound. I can't it's definitely not in the middle anywhere. <laughs> it was profound. <laughs> Katie? I must say I don't love the water analogy, but <laughs> if it means It's Gertrude Stein. Come on, water sorry. raining. <laughs> If it means thinking about language in different ways and not being um, given language, but using language and making it your own and making it different and finding your own way through language, then yes. Finding the, <laughs> finding the form that will suffice. Uh, Wallace Stevens, a poet we're not doing much with in this course, said that the supreme fiction, which is what he called his life of poetry, the supreme fiction was finding finding something that will suffice to allow me to 
find finding a form that's commensurate for what I'm trying to do. Um, Amaris, what's your answer to this question? I mean, I think what's at stake is that it's an advocation of a more open and compassionate life. So that sense that you're paying attention to form, to the desires and the silences and um, everything that's unsayable and unspoken that's still projected and conveyed through the aesthetic form that is chosen by in each individual poet. That's to me what it means to flow in that water as opposed to clash or confront with the furniture pieces that um, I was talking about at the end of that video. That's great. Anna, how can you follow that? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> but I think as we learned in Emily Dickinson in The Brain Within Its Groove, ultimately the water's going to do what it wants to do, whether we've scooped a turnpike or not. So we might as well go with the flow. All right. Yeah. Kristen? I think I would have to agree with what Katie was saying, that as long as we can find a shape for the language and not have language be shaped for us, then I would agree that that's how we should live. Max? Uh, this is all good, but I'm afraid that maybe it's a little too idealistic. <laughs> um, I think that there's huge questions about, about privilege and means that are contained in, in questions about how we live and how we choose to live, and, and I, I don't think that we can overlook those in the way that Frank O'Hara and some of the New York School poets do. Um, maybe we got to find a way to, to strike all of these balances. I don't know. Okay. Uh, where's the portable mic? Okay. All right. Let's just give the mic, uh, you know, uh, it's Gail, right? Gail. Give the mic to Gail. What's your thought? Gail's right there. What's your thought about this? Oh, I mean, what are we doing I, here? Does it does it really matter? Why don't you answer that? I'll tell you. I I mean, I think it matters, even though for me it's it's very difficult, and I go with the flow with the poet. All right, Larry. Uh, <coughs> does poetry matter? What we're doing? I think poetry matters greatly. I, I'm not so uh, fond of the water image, because. <coughs> Since water takes the shape of the vessel which absorbs it, which takes it in, uh, it becomes, in a way, very passive. And I want the poetry to change my form and not only to submit to the form that I have. I yeah. want, want to be yeah. changing, to be... Well, maybe in the Stein uh, use of water, that's true. But in the Dickinson use of water, the water is the strongest thing and will shape the form. I think that's partly what we're saying. Thank you. Brian, you want to? Uh, yes, I think I can and, and want to live that way. But um, I think Max uh, is correct. I'm going to need a lot of you guys to be sitting in offices, being miserable, working. Um, because we can't all do what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you know what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Lee? I think we have to live that way. I mean, I live like, I, I, I think we must. We must. We don't have a choice. We, we absolutely have to. <laughs> yes, Thank <I> you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you bring the mic back to Mandana? I think the world is a world of furniture. But I think our souls want to live that way. So the question is, how much, how much are you willing to give up to be able to live that way? Barbara, hi, Barbara. Hi. Um, I think that sometimes we have to move the furniture, unfortunately. But I think if we can find the time and make the time to do the poetry too, I think that's what's going to make our lives more special and more unique. Thank you, Rebecca. Yes. Um, I think we should dip our uh, furniture in Heraclitus water. I've heard this po uh, talked about in a lot of poems, reference dipping your foot in the water, and the water keeps going. And it changes us somehow, but the water's still there. Yeah, thank you. Kripa? I might have to agree with Sam in the finding the balance between... Um, or having the privilege to really live the way you want to live. But I also think that maybe if there is a room full of furniture and you also put a lot of water in there and the furniture is just like sloshing around, then the blow is perhaps softer when you have to run into one. <laughs> and um, it depends on how much water we can 
afford to put in there or how much to take out and make that work somehow. Thank you. You worked the figure brilliantly, I thought. Eric? So, you know, the worship of Apollo involved being buried in the ground for a number of days and then emerging into the sunshine. I'd like to think of that as Barbara Guest commuting mentally yeah. between Spain and Manhattan, and I think we can commute between the water. But we, we are all trying to commute between furniture and water because no one can live purely in a world of furniture. Well put. Um, can we go to um, Jane? Well, I think it would be great if everybody could live this way, but I don't know if it's, it's intense, it's afraid. I think studying the poetry makes it less so. And I think, um, you know, water is a powerful you, you know, w symbol for it because it it's, doesn't always take the shape of what it's in. Um, sometimes it forces new shapes, and uh, we have to understand the forces at play. And when you understand that with, through poetry, it's a good thing. Thank you. Michael, Dan, Meredith, who wants to speak for the family? This is uh, from Dan. Special Ed tried to teach me to move furniture. Opening to living in possibility saves lives. I knew that you were the, you needed to be the final word on that, Daniel. Can we uh, just give him a cheer for that sentiment? 